So a warm welcome to everybody who is joining us at home to worship with us. And we'll begin with the responses and a morning prayer in the service conduct. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And so we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to keep a few moments of silence as we remember God's presence here with us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well, now we're going to stand to sing our first song. It's uh, on page 22 in the song pages of the booklet. And it's, I'm going to trust in God.
Our reading this morning is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, and you can find this in the Blue Pew Bibles on page 1006. Mark 4, 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you would speak to us through your word, by your spirit that you would give us attentive and receptive hearts. Help us to hear all that you say to us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Some years ago, um, back um, in a a very harsh winter, I was driving uh, my car and unwittingly drove onto a patch of invisible black ice and I had the most unsettling experience of just sliding helplessly um, along the road. I wasn't going enormously fast but um, fast enough for it to be uh, quite frightening and the overwhelming sensation I had was of being entirely out of control entirely helpless. There was very little I could do other than just ride it out and wait for the car to gradually drift towards the curb. In the grand scheme of things, it was probably a very small incident and anyone watching might not even have noticed. But to me, it just um, had quite a, a lasting impact because I remembered the sense of being helpless, out of control, perhaps in danger, unable to make a difference to my circumstances. And sometimes life can feel like that, whether in large events or small. And when it does, we can wonder how we hold on to our peace, how we maintain our trust and confidence in God when we're not sure what the next moment will hold. Now reading today, we see the disciples experiencing just that. They've headed out into the Sea of Galilee with Jesus in a boat with a number of other boats with them. There's nothing particularly remarkable about that. Among the disciples were hardened fishermen. They knew what they were doing. So apparently no great risk. We're told in verse 37 that a furious squall came up. The word is similar to our word for a whirlwind. And the waves are whipped up by the wind and they are thrown up into the air. And not just over the boat, but they come crashing down into the boat so that it is gradually filling with water. 
And the more water comes in, the lower the boat gets, and the disciples begin to think that it will sink entirely. It is nearly swamped, we're told in verse 37. And these experienced, hardened fishermen are terrified and believe that they are in danger of drowning. And we don't need to be going to sea to feel all at sea. Sometimes this experience of being overwhelmed, feeling that we're drowning, describes very well our experiences in life. We may struggle with bereavement or illness. We may worry about our friends or family, our health or finances, or all the other challenges that come our way. Like the disciples, we may feel as if we are sinking down, drowning, overwhelmed, and not sure how we will cope or what the next moment will hold. Life is full of storms. And when we face them, it helps to remember that we are not on our own in them, that Jesus is with us by his Spirit. But there's one person in this account who doesn't seem particularly perturbed. Jesus is there, he doesn't seem bothered at all. The disciples are frantic, alarmed, terrified. Jesus is peaceful and serene and calm and sleeping. He's in the stern, we're told, in verse 38, sleeping on a cushion as the waves break over the boat. It's almost as if he's unaware of the danger that they're in, or certainly untroubled by it. There's such a contrast, isn't there, between the frantic disciples and the peaceful Messiah. They wake him up. They say, teacher, don't you care if we drown? We can feel their fear. And we might wonder, well, why is it that Jesus is so calm? And surely it's because he entirely trusts in his Father's purposes. You see, it's so often trust, faith in God, faith that God has it under control, that is the antidote to fear. When we are rushing around like the disciples, it's so often because we're not calmly trusting that God knows what he is doing. But I think what makes the disciples' anguish all the more poignant is not just that they're aware that Jesus is doing nothing, but also the suspicion that he doesn't care. Did you notice that in their words to him? He said, they say, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And there are moments when we feel as if we're drowning and it's made much worse by the sense that God doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. We struggle on, we, we pray, we try, we persevere, we look for an answer to prayer, we wait for the situation to improve, we hope for some rescue coming round the corner. We try and discern God's hand at work in our difficult and challenging circumstances. We wait for that moment of grace, for God to break in. But while we're waiting, we can easily wonder, well, does God care? Is he doing anything? Is he there for us? Or is he just busy keeping the universe spinning? What is he doing? If we ask those questions, well, we're not on our own. We're in good company. But the 
Bible tells us that God is never really doing nothing. We can't always perceive what he is doing. We don't always understand his plan. We can't always see his actions. But Romans 8, 28 tells us that we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purposes. We know that. We may not always feel it. It may not always seem immediately real. But even when the boat is sinking and the water is crashing over us, God is at work even in that moment for our good. And I believe he allows us to go through those dark moments where we can't see, where we're not sure, so that we can choose to trust. After all, faith takes wings when we are not sure, when we don't know. It's in those moments of uncertainty that we have the opportunity to lean on him all the more. Faith, the Bible tells us, is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. But it's precisely because we don't see it that it is faith. Hoped for, but not yet received. If one of our anxieties in times of crisis is that we're not sure what God is doing or whether he cares, another is that we sometimes may not be sure that God is able. Is my situation just beyond him? Are my circumstances too difficult, too complicated? Is my prayer just beyond the reach of God to answer. And the reason we trust Jesus in the storms is because we know he cares, but also because he, we know he is able to act. And isn't that exactly what we see in verse 39? He gets up. He rebukes the wind. And with just a, a phrase, he speaks to the waves and says, Quiet, be still. And the wind that was so fierce dies down. And the waves are calm and the sea is tranquil. And the situation that seems so uncontrollable, so chaotic, so dangerous now is manageable. There is peace again. There is calm. Let's be in no doubt that the storms that Jesus is able to calm are not just those on the Sea of Galilee, but all the tumults and storms and difficulties in our own lives. He's able to do more than we can ask or even imagine. Whatever we face, whatever weighs us down this morning, Whatever difficulties we faced in the last few days, whatever worries nag at us, we can place all of them in his hands. He's able. He cares. But the Bible says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Now the real question is not does Jesus care? Or even is he able to deal with the problems we face? The real question always is, will we trust him? That's exactly what Jesus puts to the disciples, isn't it? In verse 40, he says to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Faith is a response God looks for in our hearts that he longs to see. Hebrews 11 says that without faith it's impossible to please God. 
Ephesians 2 tells us that faith is a gift from God that he gives. And one that we can receive from him if we seek it. And our faith is based on who Jesus is. And here's the last point that we come to in these verses. The disciples are terrified. They ask each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And isn't that exactly the right question to ask? Who is it who can speak a word and calm the storm? Who has authority over the elements, over nature? Who is it in whose hands we are entirely safe, even when we can't always see it? And it's Jesus who is God, become one of us, who stepped into our shoes, who has loved us enough to die for us on the cross, who's risen for our justification, who offers forgiveness and new life to those who will put their trust in him. We can't avoid the challenges and difficulties of life. The storms inevitably come, they keep coming. We rarely have a trouble-free month or week. But what we can do is choose to trust in the Lord Jesus in the midst of the storm. To know that he's able to keep us from sinking, to keep us from drowning. To hold us up when we fall. And that as we trust in him, we'll find a peace that the world can't give. That circumstances cannot steal. That comes from the one who loves us. And who deserves our faith and our trust. Well let's pray that we will know that peace. And exercise that faith. So let's pray. Heavenly Father you know the storms that we have been through and have yet to go through. We thank you that you're with us in every one of them. When life feels out of control or overwhelming, we ask you to help us to trust in the Lord Jesus, who is able to calm the storm and to carry us safely through it. And we ask it in his precious name. Amen. Well, we're going to respond to God's word by joining in the words of the creed, which are in the service book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those caught up in the storms of life. When difficult circumstances and the pressures of life feel overwhelming. 
And we pray for your peace in all our hearts. And for that wonderful sense of your presence with us. We pray for all those caught up in war and conflict, and especially for those in Ukraine. We pray for the hungry and homeless, for those who are ill, bereaved, lonely or despairing. Please comfort and help them, bring hope faith and new life, and draw near to them and to all of us in our times of need. We thank you for the assurance of sins forgiven and of being right with you through Jesus' death on the cross in our place. And for the love and compassion and mercy which you have shown to us. Help us to live lives of love, reflecting your kindness and your grace. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, now we're going to stand to sing our second hymn. It's from the Songs and Hymns of Fellowship, number 286. Jesus, lover of my soul. Let me. 
For now, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on each one of you, now and always. Amen.